What's going on? It's Monday, in case you needed the reminder. <laughs> it is Monthsley with Johanna Hunt from johannahunt.ca. Guys, it is great to be here with you. I don't know about you, but I'm tempted to just go back to bed right now. <laughs> I'm feeling a little snoozy. I had a big weekend with my girls. It was Juliana's birthday. And um, she's very demanding. My kids are very demanding, but I know where they get it from. So I'm not going to talk about that. Um, it was a really fun weekend, though, and she felt very loved and very spoiled and very grateful, which is awesome. So it was worth it. But yeah, yesterday I needed to completely unplug and just do my own thing and um, rest. And I think I rested so much that I'm just like, I want to keep resting. Um, but, you know, I had a conversation come up quite a few times, people asking me, you know, some, a lot of people are revisiting their side hustle, a lot of people juggling multiple businesses, um, juggling job and business, juggling family, juggling homeschooling. And so I would say this is something I haven't done a video on in a while, but I would say it is one of my more popular topics is, you know, how do you build a business? How do you build a side hustle in 60 minutes a day? And if I didn't have multiple streams of income, if I didn't have other projects that I was working on, I would just work my business, you know, minimum 60 minutes a day. And I would just focus on social retail. But what I focus on in my social retail business and my marketing, that marketing, um, that covers my other offers as well. Cause they're all very congruent offers, right? They all have the same audience. They all serve the same purpose, helping people leverage their time, helping people build a side hustle, helping people with their social media. It's all intertwined. And so I don't need to have separate pages, have separate marketing, different systems, different platforms, things like that. Like I like to try and keep my business super simple because life is busy and there's lots going on and everybody always over overcomplicates everything. Um, so, you know, can you build your business in 60 minutes a day? If you are in marketing, like network marketing, affiliate marketing, and say you have a side job or, you know, you got lots of things going on and that's the time you have, 100%, you can build a six-figure business doing 60 minutes a day because you're going to be compounding and you're going to have that residual and passive piece if you have the right business model set up. So now if you are, say you have a different type of business, right? Like maybe you're a realtor or you are service-based um, or maybe you have coaching and things like that, you're not going to be able to build a business in 60 minutes a day, but you can market your business in 60 minutes a day if you have the right systems in place, right? And if your coaching is say automated, like you have courses or you have, uh, you know, archived um, videos and things like that, where you're not trading time exchange, you could also use, you utilize and implement this for 60 minutes a day. So this is going to be fairly short and sweet. Um, I will give you my free social media guide, which actually goes through a checklist of what exactly you should be doing daily in your marketing strategy for that 60 minutes a day. Um, and it actually has outlined as well, like what you should be doing on a weekly basis, a quarterly basis. Um, actually the best thing to do is jump into my free, um, influencer marketing mastermind where I do most of my training, most of my videos and have all of my trainings archived and all the resources archived. And then you get my free social media guide when you join there, I send it over to you. So what should you be doing if you had only 60 minutes today? So let's frame our mindset, first of all, um, around like time <laughs> and how much of it do we have and um, how much do you actually need? Most of the time, I find that the more simple it is, the less serious people take it and the more they try to overcomplicate it. And, you know, I have people come in like on my even in my team, we have people who come in and they're like, they utilize this, they utilize this tracker to build their business. Um, and they start to see results really quickly, right? And they rank events and they earn trips and stuff like that. They get to a certain point and they start to think, okay, well, I need to be doing something different. Um, I need to be, you know, creating sales funnels or I need to be like, I, they, it's like they get to a point where they think that because they've reached this level of success, they should be doing something different. And I will tell you, 
success with marketing is really mastering the mundane. It's doing repetitive things consistently, right? Like the same thing, like getting sick of hearing your story, kind of getting sick of doing the tasks every day. And the only thing that's changing really in your business is the people that you're bringing into your business and you know the conversations that you're having and the kind of content that you're creating is going to shift, right? Like it's gonna be the same, but it's gonna shift. Um, other than that, like your tasks for marketing are always the same. I've done the same things for years and I do it because it works, <laughs> right? Don't break it. Don't don't fix it if it isn't broken. Um, now, the other thing to think about is that you should be archiving and creating resources for anything that's on repeat. So you need to have, like, if you're doing your marketing, but then you also have to do every piece of your sales funnel, and you have to do that, like, manually, then you're spending a lot of time that you could be spending doing other things, you know, either creating other things in your business or just going out and having fun. And having your sales system funnels is really, really key to having those set up. is really key to being able to run your business in 60 minutes a day. So what I mean, sales funnels, again, something people overcomplicate. Yes, you can have sales funnels like, you know, um, landing page leading into email marketing, um, free offers, you know, things like that and, and blog systems and, you know, those types of funnels. Um, or you can have a Facebook group funnel or you can do it all manually, right? Or you could have like a messenger funnel. Like there's lots of different types of funnels you can have. If you're in network marketing and affiliate marketing where you're just getting started, having a Facebook group funnel is pretty much as simple as it can get, right? But you want to have the tools set up. Like you need to have welcome videos. You need to have tools and resources set up. You need to have testimonials set up. You need to have different albums set up. You need people. You want social proof inside of there. Um, but it is a very lucrative sales funnel. Like we have groups in our business that have over 500,000 people, um, for both the product side of our business, as well as the business side of our business. And there's a lot of social proof in there and we do interviews and we have resources set up and it's a very simple system where I do my 60 minutes of marketing, but then really I'm adding people into my group sales funnel, right? Or they're going into my personal group funnel for my brand. And then they're going into my social media guide and my personal uh, funnels that I've set up um, for my business community. So you want to think about everything that you're doing on social media as driving traffic to one of these sales funnels, either driving traffic to your messenger to have a conversation, driving traffic to your Facebook group to build up your Facebook group funnel or driving traffic over to your email list to build up your email funnel. OK, so social media. Marketing is all about driving traffic, creating conversation, get, gaining visibility and exposure. OK, it's not about the sales because that's what happens when you expose. You have those conversations, you convert them into your sales funnel and then your sales funnel converts them into buying customers, signups, recruits, that sort of thing. Is this making sense, you guys? I hope you're catching on to this. So there is a difference, right? And there's also a difference between passive marketing and active marketing and active marketing is you networking you prospecting and then you've got passive marketing which is what you're posting okay and they go hand in hand i've talked about this in a few other videos you know the more you are actively marketing like in messenger having conversations engaging with people in your timeline you're priming your algorithm you're getting more visibility on your content, but then you're also raising the value of the content that you're posting because now you're a human behind your content, okay? So just a couple of simple tips there. So what should you be doing in that 60 minute increment? And you can break this up however you want. If you work a full-time job, maybe you do 30 minutes on your lunch break and maybe you do 30 minutes um, in the evening, right? I would do the hardest part earlier in the day or whatever your optimal time is, and then I would do the rest 30 minutes later, or maybe you do, you're a little more heavy on one activity versus another, but I don't recommend that you cut out one of these things and try to do like all one and then not the other three or two and then not the other two, right? It's like baking a cake. Like you don't leave the eggs out. Um, you know, you don't leave any of the ingredients out. You maybe 
could put one egg, <laughs> but you can't leave you can't leave the eggs out of the batter, right? You you want the cake to turn out well, and your social media is the same as as baking a cake, right? Like there's a formula, there's a recipe, there's a reason why you do all these things. Um, usually, when people are struggling in their business, it's because they're leaving one of these things out. What's going on here? I'm like all tangled up in these cords. I'm telling you, it is a full on Monday here for me. Like I am feeling it. <laughs> okay, you guys, are you getting some value from this? Is this making sense? So the four things you should be doing, and again, um, just drop the word social media guide down below or group, and I'll add you to, I'll send you the link, um, and you can grab a copy of my social media guide, and it has a checklist, like a daily method of operation for your business exactly what to be doing and then you can go through and you can decide how many of these things you're going to do or how much time you're going to dedicate to each one and then um, it also has um, like a page with sort of a what is it called um, just some ideas for like a content planner to get you going okay because that's one of the things I find most of my group members when they join the group and I ask them what their biggest challenges are there's two there's content and prospecting and honestly like if those were the only two things you were doing in your business for marketing you'd be on track right but most people are doing either content and they're not prospecting or they're doing prospecting and not content um, they're doing whatever's in their comfort zone and so yeah their cake isn't really baking <laughs> um and and really like these are these are the income producing activities and even if you don't see an immediate transaction for these they are still your income producing activities so number one you want to you want to do 15 minutes of follow-up each day right you follow up is so key there's a reason why they say fortune is in the follow-up so whether you're doing phone calls whether you are like you know adding people to groups in messenger like stay connected right have a formula for follow-up i have a full formula for following up with prospects as well as following up with uh customers and team and things like that so set a timer for 15 minutes if you're doing 60 minutes a day that you're going to do 15 minutes of follow-up and maybe you break up each day and you're like okay on tuesdays i'm going to follow up with people in my group on wednesdays i'm going to follow up with people in this group and on thursdays i'm going to follow up with the people who reached out for more information and on fridays i'm going to follow up you know which is everybody or whatever um so set a timer for 15 minutes break it up in your day so what i have is i have a google doc for my live prospecting that's outside of my like CRM like my email marketing system and I have it you know different tabs different people I'm connecting with and so I can go in and in that 15 minutes just focus on one of those tabs okay and just get it done set a timer and get it done um, find a buddy to partner up with and do like an accountability buddy so number two is um, prospecting and so this is actually like piquing somebody's interest. Like, I don't mean like, hey, how's it going? Thanks for you know engaging on my content. Nice to meet you. How's your dog? Um, cute kids, that sort of thing. I mean like actively asking qualified questions and getting to know this person and like what their needs are, or you know maybe connecting with people who connected on your on your content. And if you're if you're doing the right kind of content, like if you're creating niche targeted content, the conversation is going to flow a lot differently. I cover this in my attraction marketing challenge. Very, very different conversation, very, very different way of running your business, um, very strategic when you are doing this correctly, right? When you have the foundation laid out. So you might want to check people who are, you know, consistently watching your stories, consistently creating content, you're seeing them in your notifications a lot they're inside of your group and you want to take that time that you're prospecting and move that person to a next step typically into your sales funnel right whatever that next step in your sales funnel is that exposure piece um, then you want to focus on marketing and I actually recommend doing these other things like doing the messenger and doing the engagement first because it's gonna prime your algorithm right it's gonna boost up uh, who sees your post and then you want to go in and you want to create a valuable post now I recommend 80-20 rule. It's been a rule for a really long time, as long as I've been in marketing, um, which is a long time. And you don't want to be creating 
like you only want to create like three to four business driven posts, right? That are direct, like a curiosity post or a direct marketing post throughout your week. And I recommend two a day, um, but you want to have value driven posts, something, you know, whether it's around personal development and mindset, whether it's a business post, whether it's a tip, whether it's an educational post story, um, something that makes people laugh, like ask yourself, would I get value from reading this post? Um, so you want to spend 15 minutes in marketing or say you don't create 15 minutes, like say you don't do that. Say you set aside on a Saturday or Sunday or whatever day you have of the week where you just set an hour aside and you create your marketing for the week. Right. And then you have it set up in Trello, which is what I do, um, or your notes or whatever. And then instead of sending that, spending that 15 minutes in your 60 minute a day tracker, you just spend that time posting that post and like engaging, right? And then you can, can you can put that time somewhere else. I can't talk today. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's all the birthday celebration. Um, I'm gonna have to have a nap today. I think that's gonna be next on the list. Um, and then number four is engage with your network and expand your network. Okay, so maybe you don't need 15 minutes for this because if you are consistently, this is the feedback I've been getting from the people who've taken my challenge. If you're consistently creating public posts and content, you're doing all these other things, you're actually gonna get a lot of people friending you up and sending you friend requests and they'll start to seek you out and that's the ideal, right? And so, um, especially if you're doing live video, even though you know live video doesn't get quite as much traction as it used to because the newsfeed is just really busy. I was just having a conversation about this. It's still gonna be your best bang for buck when it comes to creating value-driven content, right? Um, but that's gonna help you expand. So I recommend, you know, if you're posting and you're engaging and you're having conversations and you're doing all these things, you're gonna run out of people to talk to and you're gonna run out of people to see your content unless you are expanding your network and you're finding up at least five new people a day. This could be through suggested friends on Facebook. This could be through people you're meeting inside of Facebook groups. This could be driving people from other channels like Instagram, things like that. Um, using hashtags, not hashtags on Facebook, hashtags on Instagram. And then, yeah, just engage. Engage with your network. And like I said, this is something I would recommend doing before you do your posts is go in and you know leave meaningful comments on other people's content, uh, comments and engage in their stories. Um, you know, just go and give what you would like to have on your own, on your own content to have it, right? You got to give before you get. So that's it. And then I do recommend, and this is outside of your 60 minutes of fame, but it is really, really important. Personal development and nourishing your body physically, mentally, and um, nutritional wise is really, really key because you need the energy to be able to do this. You need the focus and the clarity to be able to do this. Um, and you need to bring that energy, right? And so, you know, somebody asked me recently what they could do with their time. And I said, okay, focus on this 60 minutes a day and then, you know, do your personal development, find a way to fit it in. Personally, I would fit it in at the beginning of your day, wake up 15 minutes earlier. And, you know, a lot of people think personal development is just reading books or like plugging into trainings. And that's great. There's lots of ways you can do that, right? Like you can plug into a training while you're exercising or you're walking or you're driving to school or driving, driving to school, driving to work. Um, you know, put on a podcast while you're cooking, um, or cleaning your house or whatever. Like there's lots of ways to get that, but that's not really doing personal development. Personal development is you doing your affirmations. It's you do practicing gratitude. It's you actually doing something that's raising your vibration and shifting your mindset around. Um, because we'd all be rich, skinny, and happy if how to's and in books were enough, right? Like you can't just read the book and then think that it's going to shift everything around for you. You actually have to do the daily practices to get your vibration up, to get your mindset in the right space, okay? So that is my recommendation. Again, um, I thought I'd do this today just to get everybody on focus. 60 minutes a day, grab my free social media guide. You can comment below. Um, 
or just say group in the comments and I will add you to the group and I'll make sure that you get the guide and then you can just go through and you can print it off or you can you know utilize it to create your own spreadsheet or whatever you want um, and that'll keep you on track it's a good thing to do right and then you just go in and tick off and you get all those like happy hormones for ticking the boxes and feeling accomplished it's awesome okay you guys I have more stuff to tick off my list today. So thanks for joining me on this month's lay. I will see you in the next broadcast.